Okay, so let's take a pause for the cause. And in this case, the cause is our veterans, those that have served. I serve on the board of Wounded Warriors Family Support, as I think many, if not most of you now know. And since he came into town, there's a funny story that leads into this. I'll give you the short version because it actually began at Sirius. Colonel John Folsom and I met at a dinner for Gary Sinise's foundation out on the West Coast. One day, to make it the bullet point version of the story, he showed up in New York City at my Sirius XM office and dropped a packet with a bunch of papers in it about a probably a half inch thick. Whatever it was, being very shy, he literally dropped it right down on the desk. Sign this, you're on the board. And I still am. <laughs> that's that's so, how it happened. <laughs> and, that would be a, a fair summation. A fair summation. And here he is in the studio with me. Uh, first of all, many of you know our main page, WWFS.org. You know, the High Five Tour. We've talked about the welding programs, the respite care programs over the years. And we've got a new project, which you and I have talked about before at the Marine Corps League Convention uh, when I was there, I did that. General Fields, one of our board members, Arnie Fields. I know quite a few people served with Arnie who listen to this show. Uh, but now I, I want to talk about the Dunham House Combat Wounded Care Residence, which is a ambitious project. And to the audience out there, we'll need your help, the help of every American. Uh, it doesn't take a lot, but if a lot of people do a little, it can go a long way. John, good to see you, my friend. Well, thanks, David. I appreciate you having me again. It's good to see you. Yeah, Dunham House. Let's. Uh, Dunham House is uh, 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 what we're planning, as you know. Well, you're, I guess your your folks out here don't know, but if they look up DunhamHouse.org, DunhamHouse.org, we have uh, 80 acres of uh, farmland. It's farmland now. Uh, we're planning a campus. Uh, phase one will be a 16,000 square foot, 24 bed facility, and who will live there? Our combat wounded, traumatic brain injured men and women whose parents are currently looking after them now, taking care of their, what I call assistance with daily living. And it, it, it's, it's, you've got folks who, who just can't look after themselves anymore, uh, motor skill wise. They, they may have to help bathing or dressing or eating. But at some point, when mom is no longer around, when mom can't take care of that young soldier, that young Marine, uh, the only alternative, unless a sibling takes him into the home, is that he will have to go to a long-term care facility. You and I and uh, thousands of listeners out there have all been to long-term care facilities. There are good ones. There are bad ones. It's a crapshoot. And we think we can do better. So what we've got, David, as you know, because you voted for it, uh, uh, 80 acres, uh, we, we million dollars paid for that. And we, we need to raise $10 million, uh, which will fund it uh, f- f- from start to finish. And uh, so DunhamHouse.org and every dime we raise, every dime we raise is being put into a segregated bank account. It is. It will be uh, counted for separately, and if that, for whatever reason, doesn't get built, we're refunding the donations. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> part of one of the reasons I love the way we operate. In that we have, we go for the mission. What's the mission? If you donate for this, it goes. If you donate to the High Five Tour, it goes to this. Yep. And and the point uh, and the accountability, John, in saying. If and I, I don't believe we'll need to refund a dime because well, I don't either. But I'm because just, I, I see where this goes based on need and where the American people are. Yep. That we've taken an, and it's an ambitious step, but we've taken a realistic step to a problem. And you've mentioned this before. It's not just the parents who get older and are unable. There are other situations. Look at the young wife who signs up. Uh, for the marriage, and yes, maybe move in two years at a time, but after a deployment, she didn't sign up exactly. for this this person who comes back unable to take care of themselves. And I hate to say, but it's almost understandable that at 25, 30 sometimes, that's not where you're going to spend the rest of your life. No, you're exactly right. It's sad to say that, but that's true. That's exactly, that's, you're spot on. 
the uh, so what we're looking at is, and again, I hope I hope everyone out there is is looking at DunhamHouse.org, and you'll see uh, on the front page uh, uh, a, a portrait uh, with boot camp, the boot camp uh, portrait of Jason Dunham, uh, Marine Corps, uh, his Medal of Honor. And uh, John fifteen thirteen, and uh, we're not we're not shy at all about uh, our philosophy, and it's not a, it's not about about being a Christian or, or being a Jew or a Muslim. It's about good philosophy. It's a good philosophy, and Jesus said, you know, there's no greater love that a man can show than to lay down his life for his friend, which is exactly what Jason Dunham did in April of two thousand four when he smothered a, a grenade. To protect his fellow Marines, and 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 I had heard. Let me tell you very quickly, David. Um, I became aware. I didn't know Jason Dunham. I didn't. I've never served with him, but I became aware of his life and death when I was react. When I was re- brought back on active duty, and it was at, it was at uh, uh, Camp Lejeune, and I got a call from the uh, Marine Corps liaison at Bethesda. She said, "I got to tell you the story." And she re- related the story about Jason, which is absolutely incredible, uh, that that Jason did not die immediately. Uh, Jason smothered this grenade with his body, was evacuated uh, to Bethesda immediately, and lingered for eight days. Deb and Dan Dunham came down from Sio, New York. His parents. His parents came down and... And they told they you know they they basically said he'll never be the same. Well, this kid was gonna was, was scouted by the San Diego Padres at one time. So he's a superb athlete, and 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 the doctor the way it was told to me, and I think Deb Dun- Dunham if she's on your show will 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 verify this. The doctor said it's time for Jason to go home, and they made that heart wrenching decision after eight days of lingering life support to take him off life support, and, and Jason went home. And, and 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 again, this so this thing has been nagging at me for years, and I finally contacted Deb and Dan Dunham, and I told them what we wanted to do, what my vision was, and uh, they they gave me their approval, and they, they you know they told me that they had been beset upon by other organizations who wanted to uh, expropriate Jason's name. But I assured them, and I gave gave the Dunham family our promise, David, that that we were, would do nothing uh, but honor uh, his his life, service, and sacrifice. So that's where we are. So I hope everybody out there tell them to get on the DunhamHouse.org, take a look at it, and see what we're doing. And you know, to that, <clears throat> to that, uh, had to catch my breath for a minute. It's a, it's a hard story to hear in a way, but it, it's it's a it's a hard story and a good story. Because you came to us, you came to the board as the leader of the organization, and you said, I've got this idea. And, and folks, I think you've heard John well enough to, to understand this, that when you say, I've got an idea, it's I've got a mission, and we're going to complete it. And whatever you've done, by taking it on, people have supported it uh, all across this country, and it's because of something fundamental. We support the people who defend us. We support them when they need us. And we're family support because those families are all over this country. And they've, you know, not everybody comes back wounded. Not everybody dies. Most come back and they go on to productive yep. lives. And and that's why we can accomplish this. That's why we can get this done. And, and you've laid out a bold vision, which we've all come on board. We've purchased the land, again, 80 acres, has great potential belong beyond the initial phase. And the type of care that the veteran will receive there and the people that will care for them opens the door to also hire veterans to come into this range. I, Colonel Clark, you've met Jeff. Yeah, sure. We've talked about this. Here's a guy with skills, and I know Jeff, so I'll say, but he said, you know what, when you get this, he goes, I'm in. And there are so many out there that I've talked to that say, you get this up and I'm in. Yeah, I think so. And, and again, we hired a uh, uh, HDR. Now, no, most of your audience probably never heard of HDR, but I will. I will promise you, they are a uh, one of the top, the top uh, architectural firms in the United States, if not the world. A top, top drawer, and uh, and it's going to be built. And you'll see a couple sketches, uh, artist renditions on the uh, Dunham House site. It, I envision 
uh, a very lodge-like, and I've been very clear to the uh, planning team at HDR, I want a lodge-like facility. I want first class. It's going to be a first class facility. Uh, we're even we're even not going to be shy and uh, uh, we're, we're going to have we're going to have a smoking deck. We're going to have an area where if if these young men want to partake in a cigar at the end of the day with a scotch, this is going to be their home, uh, their rules. And if they're able uh, medically to, to enjoy a, a beverage and a cigar, then by golly, if they're old enough to take a bullet for a country or an IED, getting blown up by an IED, they're, you know, they're going to drink drink scotch and smoke cigars. And uh, that's going to be their home. And they run the show. Uh, we're there. We will be there to serve them, not the other way around. Yeah. And, folks, we need your help. We're, we're at the beginning. We've taken the initial steps. Uh, this is a lifelong project. You know, you and I will be long gone, John. The board will have a new board. There will be new employees in the office. And this will continue. Be, and I hope, you know, I have a long-term view of things. And I look at this and I say, this is our beginning, but we yeah. don't know where the end of this is. There will always be more in need there will always be some war some well, this is conflict. phase one you know this yeah. is phase one and i it, what's interesting is that uh when the number was thrown out at me when i said well gee uh, how much is this going to cost and they said 10 million dollars to open the doors and I, I about fell out of a chair and uh hal dobbins you know Hal, he's a former congressman on our board he said former mayor of uh, omaha nebraska he said, "It's nothing but a number. It's ten million dollars. It's nothing but a number. It's a number. It's a, it's a one with 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 uh, seven zeros. So what? And if you think of our country, three hundred thirty million people, uh, ten million dollars. He's he's right. Is a number. It's it's really nothing. I hate to put it that way, but it, it's 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 nothing. And uh, but I but I'd, I'd ask your your folks out there who are listening to uh, take take a look at Dunham House. What we're doing too." is that uh, we're not going to give you a blanket for making a donation but we do have we do have a, a portrait that was done by uh, uh, Mike Hagel who's a who's a renowned uh, uh, military artist uh, there's a portrait of uh, of Corporal Dunham uh, it has his medal of honor there's the 3rd Battalion 7th Marine uh, insignia 1st Marine Division insignia and the title of the print, this is a uh, very high quality print, uh, is No Greater Love, Semper Fidelis. I would ask you to look at that. Uh, these are, well, Dave, you have one of the prints. I have one. We all have one. And, and we have the same print that yep. that if you donate, you know, we want to get to $125, and I'll send you a, a print of, so every Marine out there or anyone who admires Marines uh, should want to have one of these things. So I'd ask you to take a look at that, folks, and uh, give it a shot. Yeah, and some of you, as I said before, have served under uh, General Fields, for instance. Some, we've gotten calls for you too, John. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and so many out there support this, folks. Take a look. The, the artist renderings are coming to life. This was a vision that is now real, but it has a way to go, and you can be part of it. And, and again, 100%. 100% goes to this. Uh, we're a top-rated charity. I can't go without saying this because I say this, that folks should check out the charities they donate to. They should look them up. There are resources, Charity Navigator, GuideStar, other organizations. Do a search engine. Find out who they are. Look at the 990s. Those are our public disclosures. We do the job at a lower percentage than is even expected. We do it for, what, about 6% of total cost? Well, it, we're probably, we're probably right now. Bit, it varies a little bit, but we're, we are so low yeah. compared to others out there who are good standards. There are good charities out yes. there. It's a great thing about this country, but we we strive to do it better, and that's your mandate. Uh, that that's well, John, John is not shy with the board about we've that. We've got a good board. We've got we've got good employees. We're a small organization, so I don't want anybody thinking that we're some nosebleed organization out there. We're small. Uh, we have 13 employees. We cover all 50 states, Puerto Rico, even Guam. We have families all over 
uh, the United States and that we who we serve. And uh, so we're based in Omaha, but we're a, we're, a, we're a truly a national organization. We're just not big. You may not have heard of us. We don't advertise. It's uh, by word of mouth, and uh, so. Well, we've done a lot by word of mouth. We have. We've done a lot by word of mouth and work of the American people. And uh, I know some of you have also served under John Sylvester, General Sylvester, yeah, you our chairman Tiger, of the board. Tiger Brigade back in the Gulf first Gulf War. Yeah, so uh, you, you know who some of these people are, but you do know who these veterans are, even if you don't know them personally. They're the ones in need. This is the mission, and uh, we may be small, but we're effective. Absolutely. That's that. We're like a, you know, David. For for those folks out there who are in the military who are listening to you, uh, imagine, you know, what well, one time when 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 I first uh, came in the Marine Corps. This was a long time ago. Was when I was at OCS back in the day. We trained with M14s, and I actually got to qualify for with an M14, big round. And then, of course, then later, you know, Marine Corps switched completely from M14s to. Uh, uh, M16s with a 5.56 five, round. Well, a 5.56 five, five, round is a hell of a lot smaller than a, than a 7.62. However, I can pack a lot of 5.56 five, five, rounds into a pouch. Uh, smaller round, but just as lethal. And that's the way I like to look at the organization. We may not be big. We pack a fairly good punch above our of our of our weight class. So that's what I want folks to appreciate about what we're doing for our veterans. Well, we appreciate the work you do, John. You uh, you gave me the packet. You gave me no option, yeah. and I'm glad you did. <laughs> I'm glad you're in. I'm glad you did. All right, Colonel John Folsom retired. Uh, go ahead. What's what's the number here? Are we going to take some calls? You want to, David? All right, if people call, you're going to hang around with me for the hour. i got to take care of some other business, but uh, if you want more information on this, the colonel's going to hang around. You can call. I'll keep him on standby. So at ease, Colonel. Thank you, David. 866-95-PATRIOT, 957-2874. That might be the first time I've given an order to a colonel. <laughs> I'll be right back. The news breaks. We analyze and clarify. You form opinions. This is the David Webb Show. I told you I'd keep him on standby, and here he is, Colonel John Folsom, president of Wounded Warriors Family Support. Uh, and in Florida, Steve, what's on your mind? Hey, uh, where is this facility going to be located? Omaha, Nebraska. And let me explain why Omaha, Nebraska. It's, and it's not just because we're headquartered out, out of there, but if you look at a map of the United States, of the 48 contiguous states, Omaha's basically smack dead center of the middle of the country and what we what we what we reasoned out is that if a, if a young soldier needs care he might want to come here because his siblings and other family members may be scattered throughout the United States and it'll be a lot easier to get to Omaha than if you've got somebody say from Long Island and brothers and sisters are scattered throughout, you know, say out in Washington State or down in Arizona, it's just a central, it's just the most central location we could come up with. Well, I'm in. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Steve. I, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Airborne. Airborne. All right, Airborne. There you go. All right. <laughs> Like my best friend, uh, Tim. Steve, thanks for the call, man. And to anyone else out there uh, like Steve, uh, go to dunhamhouse.org. You can go to the website. Uh, it's up on my Twitter at David Webb Show. I'll put it up on my Facebook page as well to remind you. And as we progress through phases of this project, I'll make sure that uh, you have the information. Uh, we look. This is going to be a and 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 this is not something that's like another, I don't know, public works project that can take years. This has got to be done immediately. You know, John's point about you know the the people in this country, the size of this country, a small donation by a large group of people, and we can be off and running. And how many times does someone say to you, one hundred percent? of what you give me goes to this and you can see it you can see it build the other reason we can't wait is really a simple one the need is today the need is now it's it's not 
next time, next day, next week. There is a need for this right now. So the, the, the expediency is right there. All right, we'll go back to some other callers. I know you've been patient. I appreciate that on other topics. Tom, Massachusetts, go ahead. Just go ahead and take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 